The price that this is currently on is very attractive and I still feel it is super undervalued. I'm not even sure why it's at such a low price point. Hello people, before I get started, just know none of this is an intent to attack the person or ideas. In this video, you're going to hear some personal opinions, which are personal, hence they are object to no critique. However, you're going to hear some data and facts or so feel obsessed that will actually may not what they appear or sound like. So sit back, relax and enjoy. Let's get started. I think the intro is going to be a giveaway, so we might skip it. Now, Pokemon investing is a skill, but what makes certain car- I mean, investing is a skill, but yeah, obviously. ...products perform better over the long term. I'm going to answer that in just a second, but for today, I am gifting this incredible PSA 10 Dragonair- All right. Let's give away, let's try here. Dragonair, it's your... Yeah. All these cars... Now, here's the thing right now when it comes to Pokemon investing. Pokemon investing is like a new phenomenon, and while it does get people debating and arguing over this... I mean, you could argue people been keeping, you know, sealed boxes for long time but you could argue you know it's it's gotten bigger over time but calling you phenomenon is uh, i guess you could say that but obviously if if there's people having you know vintage boxes they must have kept it sealed um and you know some of them you could argue they just left over from some warehouse some of them you know people at some point in the past maybe 10 years ago they realized you know, oh look this old oh, what's is boxes might be worth something in the future as things are going the reality is that there is an enormous amount of products that have actually risen over the years. Now, what's super interesting about Pokemon products, particularly sealed products, is their potential for growth once they go out of print is very high. Like, if you bought anything below retail price before it went out of print, it's almost like 100% success rate for growth. And I know that sounds crazy to say, but like, it's actually... Oh, uh, so I think um, in this space, you could argue, I, 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 I saw uh, that boxes, vintage boxes, Wizard of Coast boxes back in 2006, maybe 2008, uh, that you know that dark year of Pokemon, they were below retail. They were like forty, fifty dollars. I'd say even sixty dollars back at the time, which is well below what uh, was selling for Master P, and hence they were in a loss. Um, so technically, and you know they were five year old boxes. So technically, it's partially correct. I think you got to tell the whole story, uh, but you know. It, and another thing is, uh, when, when it comes to historical data, so let's say you take a, a, a look at ELA performance, right? Uh, so you have got 20 years of data and you say, well, over 20 years, you know, uh, boxes never sell for below what MSRP, which is, it's right. Uh, but, you know, you got 20 data points and 20 data points and 20 data point is just not enough for mathematical reasons, which I'm not going to explain right now, but I could. I could make a whole video about it. Uh, it's not going to be enough to predict the future. So, yes, it's happened in the past. But as usual, when it comes to investing, you can take a look at the past to try to get an idea what is going to happen in the future. But, you know, it doesn't mean that the fact that it's always happened in the past doesn't mean it's going to happen in the future. Otherwise, we'd all be rich. Pretty feel the dark. In early 2023, Fusion Strike and Chilling Rain were your bargain sale sex men. They were so readily available, and fast forward a year and a half later, and the tune has completely changed. Now, obviously, that's with sealed Pokemon products, but what about sealed? Yeah, that's absolutely true. If you're new to Pokemon, they were selling for 80 or 90 dollars, as well as uh, in the EU, they were selling also in the 90s, which is quite unique in the European Union, and uh, now they're selling for over 2x that. So, that's absolutely true. And uh, could it happen again? Absolutely. Could it never happen again? It's also possible. Considering you have boxes at 90 US dollars now, they could get be 250 in five years. I don't know, but yeah, that's that's absolutely true. Singles perform a little bit differently. They are more volatile than sealed, and their pricing can be a little bit out of touch. And they just go up and they go down. One month they're up, one month they're down, and it just usually keeps repeating. So there is a little period when they are usually undervalued. Um, so you know, saying this without data to support it, and as well as saying singles. So there's so many singles. Uh, so yeah, I'm sure if you pick a single that you know that's a common and uh, it's been $2 for all of its lifetime, then it's gonna obviously gonna be less volatile than uh, any shield product, right? And obviously with volatility comes price movement because I'm sure you guys know volatility is nothing but a standard deviation. So if it doesn't move from the mean, so standard deviation measures basically how much a price, usually it's based on returns. You take the volatility of returns, not a price, uh, because that would be very, uh, because it would be complicated when you have to compare it to something else. So you usually take the volatility of returns. And so basically it tells you it's a measure of how returns deviate from the average, from the mean. 
and uh, if you know if you don't have volatility you, you will uh, it's highly possible you won't move as much as you want to if you want pretty good gains right even though some singles rise and then they fall in value they usually remain above their original purchase price once they did so this once again um it, it I think what he's saying is basically, you know, they if they dip, then they they try to make what you call in, uh, you know, finance uh, lower lows. So I guess it's possible, but once again, uh, you, you know, the fact that happened for some singles means that it's not going to happen for others, right? Um, so that's it's always two sides of the story. Big the question: What are the ten most undervalued Pokemon singles at the moment? Well, sitting at number ten is the Drowsy Illustration Rare from Scarlet and Violet. This card is an iconic artwork, and also to me, this sits toe to toe with the Magic Carp Illustration Rare in terms of unique and incredible artworks. It ticks a lot of the boxes that fit an undervalued Pokemon card. It's a Gen One Pokemon. It has an incredibly unique artwork. It's quite challenging to pull, and it's just an amazing design overall. The price that this is currently on is very attractive, and I still feel it is super undervalued. I'm not even sure why it's at such a low price point. What? <laughs> Did you guys see? Have you guys seen that? Um, so I I agree. It's great artwork. Uh, it's Gen One Pokemon, so it does take some boxes. Um, but uh, you know, it I think it comes down to how you measure valuation because you say something's under value, but how do you measure valuation? That's a big question, which I don't know if it's gonna address in the video. Uh, but uh, you know, under value and uh, it's gone up ninety five percent over the past three months. Interesting. Even so, I think this card can climb to become a very expensive card. Now, Scarlet and Violet Base is still circulating, and the reality is it is very easily available, though the tune can change and shift quite quickly, and this card can certainly see a rise once this happens. It's rare to get such a unique artwork like this, and it's one of my personal favorite cards from the Scarlet and Violet era. So, we will need to see how it goes with the forms of this card. Now, moving on to number 9, it is the Dragonair from Pokemon 151. Yes, the card that is the gift for the video today. Though legit, this artwork is just sensational, and it is incredibly undervalued. Its artwork is amazing, along with Dragonair. So, here it's interesting because right now it pulls the one-year chart, no, no, no longer the three-month chart. Um, and it's you know it's been pretty much flat for the past year, which is I think it's interesting. I agree, it's great artwork. Uh, the problem I would have with this, and this is my personal opinion, uh, sixteen dollars, given how easy one five one illustration rares are are to pull, uh, is that undervalued? And I think once again it comes down to how you measure valuation, right? Uh, so I I think if you don't state in the video a clear measure of valuation, uh, all, all these ideas are uh, arguable uh, but again that's his opinion my opinion is uh, interesting it shows the one-year chart now it's been flat so it's actually pretty good it's it hasn't been up 93 95 uh, percent you know in the past three months just like the other one uh, and uh, yeah I guess it comes down to you you know how you measure valuation your personal uh, appetite for risk so on and so forth such a loved Pokemon. Now here's the thing, right? With Generation 1 Pokemon, it is incredibly hard for these not to perform well over a long time. Sometimes the insane luck of Generation Once again, I'm not a fan of, you know, it's incredibly hard to lose money uh, be, because, it, you know, it kind of creates a you know, an hype about, oh, look, you can, it's so easy to make money with this. But once again, uh, that's his opinion. Uh, that's the way I think it. I'm not a big fan of people hyping things. One can be a little bit overdone, but it does seem people are so connected to these original Pokemon. But the reality is, they do have the most nostalgic pull power for the masses. And when you have so many fans getting drawn from the same era, it just creates demand. Dragon Air has an elegant design and is quite challenging to pull this card, so this card just fits the category for being undervalued with a very prosperous future ahead of it. Now, seeing at number eight is the Tatsuguri illustration rare from Twilight Masquerade. Now, fish Pokemon usually have huge connections with being lucky and design. This Tatsuguri artwork really is a standout in terms Actually, I didn't know this feature about uh, fish Pokemon, but uh, good to know. It's design, it's unique, it's flashy, and it's just awesome. It has personality, and that makes such a world of difference when it comes to Pokemon card artworks. Tatsuguri is also very connected to the Generation 9 games, and it makes an amazing job at recreating some of that magic from older Pokemon designs. Though this card artwork is a real standout, and I honestly feel it's a set that could show some incredible promise. I really rate this card artwork, and I can only imagine that it will become successful in the future. Now, segueing from the Tatsuguri. Oh, well, I'm not a big fan of uh, Flying Sushi. Uh, but again, it's, these are his opinion, so I think it just says that uh, it's uh, it looks nice in, in his opinion, hence why I think it's undervalued. Yeah, not a big fan of flying food. From Twilight Masquerade, sitting at number seven is actually the Twilight Masquerade booster box. Now, yes, Twilight Masquerade isn't something that I would personally call undervalued per se, though it is a set that looks like it has some serious fire underneath. So I think this is an interesting point. It wouldn't call Twilight Masquerade undervalued. I don't know if it's because, you know, it's one of the booster boxes has seen such a huge rise over such a short period of time when it comes to the Scarlet and Violet era. Obviously, uh, if we don't consider one for one, one for one didn't have booster boxes. And uh, I mean, this if if that's logic, I don't think it's undervalued because it's gone up what like 25, 30 percent since released, and you know, a matter of three months. 
why would you call the drowns the undervalued if it's gone up in three months so at the same time span 95 percent uh, if that's logic obviously it doesn't say it it just says hey we're gonna see undervalued it doesn't say why though Twilight Masquerade is the first set that has shown some real amazing chase cards. From the incredible Greninja special illustration rare to the iconic EV illustration rare. I mean, we all know how loved EV Lucian's are. Look at all these guys, man. That was literally just like an EV thing set. Not only that, but it does have the incredible Infernape illustration rare and the Theon. This set really is stacked with a lot of winners, and it seems it will compete with Paldera Evolve for the most desired set for Scarlet and Violet so far. Of course, this is not including special sets because if it was, then 151 would be winning that race entirely. So if it was special sets, then I mean, I guess it's 151, right? But out of these mainline sets, it is really looking good. But while we move on to Stellar Crown and future sets, it seems that Twilight Masquerade will show some amazing promise in the future, so you don't want to miss out on it. Now, moving on to number six, it is Exadrill illustration rare from Temple. Oral forces. This card is absolutely sensational, and I love how Exadrill is brought into a human like environment and how it looks like it's just part of the team. This is an incredibly creative artwork, though more than that, it seems it's been underlooked for a while. I mean, Temporal Forces in general is a set that's been on the quiet for such a long time. When Temporal Forces released, which is the set. That so, once again, here it looks like he it, it thinks it's undervalued uh, because he likes the artwork, uh, which I think it's, you know, once again, it's own opinion. I'm not a huge fan of that artwork, but he likes it. Uh, it doesn't mention price, uh, but obviously, if he thinks it's undervalued, he thinks that it might rise in price. In the future. And this extra drill, it had just so many rumors circulating around, right? People were saying, oh, I did short printed, and they were saying all these sorts of things about the set, and none of this really came to fruition, though this card has certainly been left in the shadows. What you can't forget with these illustration rooms, right? There's only a finite time to collect them, and more than that, once they're out of print, it's unlikely that Pokemon will recreate these up. I mean, he says there's a finite time to collect IRs. I mean, here I'm picky, but there is obviously a finite time to collect anything, as we do have technically not a finite time, but a, a limited amount of time if you want to be, you know, a math geek like myself. I'm here to tell you right now, we don't care. Let me tell you. <laughs> but I understand his point. Um, but yeah, you have a finite time for uh, uh, any card. Again, they are very unique and they're very linked to a specific era in time. And right now we're living in this time, but that's not going to be forever. This extra drill will never be a super expensive card, right? Though, never saying never, though it does feel like it's incredibly consumer friendly and it's at a very good price point at the moment. Okay, so here we have the, the price chart. It pulls it out. And as you can see here, it, it uses the six month chart. So we start with three months. Then I don't remember what it was though, the yearly chart, the Dragonair, and now the six month chart. Uh, so down 30% over the last six months, which is basically all the, the history we have, as I said, released in March. But uh, yeah, I think, you know, in my opinion, this could fit the undervalued category as it's, you know, it's it hasn't gone up 95% over the last three months. But uh, yeah, I, once again, uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't call it undervalued. Uh, I wouldn't buy it, but uh, that's his opinion. Market. Now, another five is Paragon Z from Paradox Rift. Man, this has to be one of the best illustration rares from Scarlet and Violet. Just seriously look at this card. The art. I mean, once again, these are his opinion, uh, but you know, I think about Tyrander from Poldia, the Magic Card from Poldia, the Groudon from Paradox, the Steelix from Paradox. Uh, we got the Eevee, he also mentioned from Twilight. You got uh, what else? You got the, you know, with Shroud of Fable, you got the Persian, the Houndoom. Uh, but yeah, I, I wouldn't call it the, the best, one of the best, uh, but that's his opinion. Artwork perfectly captures Porygon. It feels like a wild science experiment and the colors really work well. This is an incredible artwork and it's a fantastic illustration box. Confused about wild science as it looks like a gaming room, but uh, yeah, that, that might, might be my English not uh, helping out. Pokemon Z isn't a huge fan favorite. It is an amazing Pokemon that deserves way more recognition. This artwork really gives the Pokemon justice. I just love when artworks blend so well. This guy's amazing, and once again, Paradox Rift is easily available right now. I did speak in a previous video about whether or not Paradox Rift will be the next big investment, which you can watch right here. Though, when Paradox Rift officially goes out of print, I feel this Pokemon may have an interesting future ahead. It's one that you should keep a lookout for. Now, seeing at number four is one. Uh, by the way, one thing that is very important and uh, you didn't mention is that Paradox Rift, alongside Poly Evolved, have the toughest pull rate when it comes to pulling a specific illustration rare. So, so they demand a higher price because of pull rate. They're the toughest in the whole Scarlet Violet hero so far. Once again, I'm talking about Poly Evolved and Paradox Rift, so I would 100% mention it. Uh, if I'm talking about undervaluation, I think that's a pro. If you have pull rates on your side, that card is hard to pull, uh, then I would 100% uh, have mentioned it. One special illustration rare Alakazam. Now Alakazam is a unique card because over the last year it has shown incredibly strong stability. It's very reminiscent of Leafy on VMAX from Evolving Skies, although it's just a little bit less rare and definitely less expensive than that. This kind of market stability is a good sign and one to keep an eye out for on the future. Sometimes we want to see cards. Um, so let me get back to the chart. So it says that stability is a good sign, uh, but uh, he also mentioned uh, you know the drowns see 95% up and it thinks undervalued. So he thinks stability is a good sign for I would assume uh, undervaluation as that's what the video is about. But then uh, you actually say that 
you know, having a card that has gone up 95% is also a good sign because you think it's undervalued. The math ain't mathing. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I agree with, with this statement, obviously, if it's, you know, it's been stable, then uh, it could be something to look into it. I wouldn't say it's, you know, undervalued, one of the best, uh, but obviously, you know, these are signs that I personally look, uh, but that's again, you know, his opinion. Uh, but yeah, just the part where, you know, this is under is a good sign of undervaluation, but then you got the opposite. So you got something that almost doubled in three months and that's also undervalued. Keep an eye out for on the future. Sometimes we want to see cards that will explode, but we need a little more emphasis on stability. Stable cards like Alakazam and Leafy on VMAX are fantastic. They show that they are desired cards and they're not driven by hype as much as they are by actual fan demand. One by one Alakazam. I mean, fan demand makes up a hype. So they're the two are correlated. And uh, it's interesting it says that you want stability but you know you're looking for undervaluation so you want to make gains so you want something that could go up and upset but hopefully it could go up uh you know exponentially so you can make the most profit out of it if you're trying to profit so quite unsure on that too it's definitely in a unique position and hopefully it stays like that for a while right i mean even with the pokemon 151 reprint that you know may or may not happen shortly this card is in a good position given its stability with the current market however when looking at markets stability is far better than volatility even though some cards may spike more it just feels like this alexander sits in a real sweet spot i mean don't expect you once again, stability is better than volatility, but you know, you're looking for undervalued cards, so you want them to go up, uh, but you, you're afraid of volatility. So, you know, if they're volatile, potentially means they, you know, they move away from the, from the bean, as I explained, that's what volatility is all about. Um, so yeah, I'm a bit confused. In this card, but then don't expect it to just crash either, right? Now, and number three, it's both the Leafeon and the Glaceon from Crown. So yeah, I said, don't expect it to go crazy huge, but don't expect it to crash. Uh, which once again it's because you know he's looking at historical data i talked about in the in the intro how much you know having so few data points is actually uh, you know not a good model you can model out of it uh, you can make a model out of it oh God, not again. Uh, but uh, yeah that's uh that's, that's something interesting now, evolutions are some of the most noteworthy Pokemon when it comes to collecting. Nearly all collectors and fans who love them just agree that evolutions are fantastic. I mean, if you ask most people what their top 10 favorite Pokemon are, I mean, it's pretty likely that at least one evolution will make that list, right? Because of this, evolutions are incredible cards to collect, and so many collectors just love having them. Though the Levion and Glaceon for Crown Zenith are just real standouts. They look sensational and they have prominent and unique artworks. Crown Zenith in general is just fantastic. Though these two evolutions take the spot. I 100% agree. Uh, highly likely, if you ask someone what's what's his favorite Pokemon, their favorite Pokemon, they're got, they might answer an evolution and. Uh, 100% agree, Crown Zenith, uh, one of the best set ever to be made, and uh, these two cards, all artworks are also gorgeous, 100% agree. Also, seeing as they are the two evolutions which were introduced during Generation 4, they leave a lot of promise for the future, because Generation 4 is due to have its nostalgia spike in 2027, as it usually takes like 20 to 21 years for that to occur, right? Now, we but, but the, that is an interesting claim. Second spot, we have Gloom from Obsidian Flames. This card is fantastic. It has an incredibly unique artwork, and the price is just so consumer friendly for any buyer. Now, Obsidian Flames is a little bit of a weak set, right? It has a one card that's like it's like a one card race with Charizard. But literally, how long can that last? Eventually, other cards will need to rise, and it seems the Nine Tails and the Gloom both fit this category. Now, even though Obsidian Flames may seem a little bit lackluster, it doesn't actually mean that Obsidian Flames is useful. I mean, I didn't love the part where he said eventually the cards will need to rise. Uh, they won't need to rise. Uh, they may stay stable, as he also stated. You know it. It already talked about stable cards three minutes ago, so they don't need to rise. They won't rise necessarily, uh, but yeah. This cannot rise in value. I mean, look at Rebel Clash as an example of a sealed set that has nothing noteworthy inside, though the sealed product is quite valuable. It doesn't always mean that a set won't rise in value if it's sealed. I mean, that's cherry picking, and uh, usually cherry pick when you want to use a counter example, not in favor of your thesis. That's usually how it's done. And, uh, you know, Rebel Clash saying this, but without telling about print runs differences, uh, yeah, it's my opinion it's telling one side of the story cards inside are expensive sealed items are collectibles in and that of themselves now finally another one is shiny treasure ex booster boxes yes these japanese booster boxes are seriously on a bargain sale and they can only last so long this is one of the few sets with a decent chance of actually 100 percent uh agree shiny treasure um it's also my raider so i'm pretty actually glad he he put it as uh, number one Money open. Though I don't recommend that anyway. In general, you should never really just open packs because you'd like to make profit. Though this set is definitely looking like you actually could, given the fact that the price of the cards inside, along with the price of the booster box. Shiny Treasure right now seems to be a very affordable booster box and it contains some incredible shiny Pokemon cards inside. On top of that, it's incredibly affordable, which just makes it super desired. I really rate Shiny Treasure EX and I also love the box packaging. I mean, when talking about something being undervalued, it doesn't get much better than this. Though I have to say that the tier list videos that I make are always entertaining, so if you did enjoy this video, here's a. I mean, he, he said it, you can make money out of it, uh, but uh, 
didn't show the numbers. You know, yeah, I, I made some video about a few sets, how you could, uh, you know, the expected value of opening a box. I also include PSA graded cards in that model for, you know, some sets that are on the channel. Uh, but, you know, just seeing it to 12,000 people, you know, just because it feels like it uh, might not be the best idea. Other eight must have Pokemon investments. Within this video, All right. history, I go over some of the. All right, people, so that was it. Uh, again, not an attack to Phillips in any way, shape, or form. I just wanted to make a new comment. As I do say sometimes, things I don't agree with, uh, and it's some things I don't agree with, as you can say, are just opinions, which you know are opinions. I said it when it's opinions. Some are facts, and uh, you know I'm not a huge fan of uh, misinformation, and uh, I, can, I feel like I can provide some value with my knowledge about mathematics that perhaps may, some people may not know, so I'm just trying to help. Well, the only question I want to ask you is, how do you guys measure on evaluation? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.